Hey everyone, welcome. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. This is actually a really, really cool video. I hope that you can stick till the end because we're going to talk about opportunities in the energy crisis in a whole different way than we've talked about so far before. Because I have talked about the energy crisis. I have mentioned about the energy crisis, the global energy crisis. We've talked about a little bit about what's going on in Europe. And we're going to see a lot of a whole a lot of information a little bit in a different way opportunities uh, also a good opportunity for discussion after you see this video you might might give you a reason to discuss something with a friend about the energy crisis a lot of cool information so let's get started all right the the opportunities that the energy crisis can create right can the energy crisis create opportunities of course uh, every crisis can create opportunities uh, but at the same time it's kind of sad but let's look at uh, how things are going let's start off with one of the richest people in Greece Evangelos Mytilineos if you've ever heard of him um, just in the beginning let's look in the beginning of the video his view on the energy crisis and we'll go our, our way after that uh, so Evangelos Mytilineos view on the energy crisis and the reason that this is the first of many to come we talked about that before I mentioned that the first of many to come unfortunately it kind of seems like that's how we're headed to new surprises every once in a short while so um, so yeah like we said the first of many to come dominated yesterday's news what he had to say so he said uh, this is the first of many to come and it caused a whole stir here in Greece and like well what is this guy talking about what's going on does he know something we don't know so he believes that due to social pressures right important social pressures Europe and not only Europe also in the United States very important that the United States uh, um, lately the past few years has a lot of social pressures uh, is led to immediate decarbonization right without the necessary investments so that every citizen has access to energy until we achieve the immediate transition I don't know if let me say it again All right, this is very important and he's very right on that. Let's look at Europe. Europe is led to immediate decarbonization. Europe signed on its own will agreements, right? It signed agreements. And in those agreements, Europe has to achieve certain goals, uh, very drastic, very fast goals to be green. The thing is, Europe never thought of, or I don't know how the politicians of Europe work. I have no idea. Sometimes trying to figure out how their minds work is harder than figuring out figuring figuring out the stock market. So we have no immediate we we don't have any intermediate investments in Europe. Yeah, I mean they're very, they're not they they kind of exist and kind of don't. And it and so far is causing an energy crisis like we've never seen before. Uh, not every citizen has access to energy, unfortunately, in many, in some parts of Europe. But and 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 the rest who do have access to energy, we're seeing our bills uh, have skyrocketed three times already. Like they're they were now paying three times more than ever. And Europe at the same time is saying as a whole, we're having the biggest natural gas crisis of our life. I don't know if we're going to be freezing cold in the winter or not. Um, it's just weird. It's just. You know, they try to go the green way without, like like Evangelos Mitilineo said, without the intermediate investments. And now we're trying to fix things real quick. Anyways, so that's one thing to look at. Now, in the transitional phase, the whole transitional phase until we get to the immediate transition of green energy, right? So in the transitional phase, the fuel that will dominate will be natural gas. I've said that many times before. You guys know it. Natural gas... Um, if you don't know it, natural gas is going to play a big, big transitional phase role. And for during for however long this transitional phase lasts, one, two, three, four, five years, natural gas stocks, the natural gas stocks uh, would be a very good investment. But so far, there is no necessary infrastructure, mainly storage, aka Europe, wake up, an investment that requires uh, huge funds. So investors around the world are wondering whether where the energy crisis could lead us. Where is this energy crisis going to lead us? What its characteristics will be and whether volatility will prevail or stagnant inflation will prevail, right? Maybe both. 
So inflation that is not accompanied, this is for stagnant inflation, inflation that is not accompanied by an increase in production, creating an increase in rates unemployment, a combination that struck the world economy in the 1970s. Now, however, credible analysts say that while rising energy prices may hit the post-pandemic effort, it is very unlikely that it will cause a recession as they point out that the world's weight, or should we say the other way around, the oil's weight on the world is less than what it used to be. Kind of true, yes, um, green energy has um, been part of our lives in a small way and, and in a higher presence, let's say, than before. Now, according to UBS, in the United States in 2014, when the price of oil and, uh, was about the same as, uh, as today, $80 a barrel back in 2014, gasoline accounted for 3.26% of consumer spending, whereas today, gasoline accounts for 2.35% of consumer spending. That's, that's a 1% less. Big. That 1% though accounts... It equals to a whole, whole lot of money. So that's a big difference. Now, in world markets, however, the insurance of green bonds holds very well. So the, uh, not the insurance, the issuance of green bonds holds up very well. China has already issued $54.1 billion worth of bonds in the first eight months of the year. That is up 152% from more than a year earlier. So what does that mean? More money to go around for green energy infrastructure. So this is to fund Beijing's transition to clean, low carbon, uh, low carbon dioxide, uh, and uh, to green energy. All right. Yesterday was a great success. The issuance of the first green bond in the European Union that raised 12 billion euros with repayment in 2037 and high demand that rose to 135 billion euros about 170 billion US dollars. So the 250 billion US dollar program aims to distribute profits to member states for investment in the energy sector on the road to adapting to climate change. So like, let's look at opportunities now because there's some money gonna be going around, right? The role of banks, guys, the role of banks. I didn't mention this before in uh, other times I said about opportunities in energy crisis, but having adding bank stocks to your portfolio is going to pay off in the long term. Trust me, in a year from now, in two years from now, and so on. Banks are going to be giving out the money for our transition to green energy. The role of banks in 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 the role of banks in the virtuous way of reducing emissions will also be important. The goal of reducing them by 55% by 2030 will require annual investments of more than $450 billion, which is way more than the past decade. Now, green bonds will account for 25% of new issues by 2023 in Europe, which will help commissions from bond issues exceed 2020 levels. Their commissions may be lower than corporate green issues uh, compared to with the conventional ones by 10%, but we must also take into account the lower risk because a company with an energy profile and lower energy costs is less risky, right? So banks will do well. Pick up bank stocks. Uh, it's not professional financial advice. Please uh, don't go because I said that in the video. I'm, I'm just suggesting things. Uh, investors, what securities uh, in the stock markets could we benefit from that are, you know, there are benefits coming out of this energy crisis, right? Uh, so if in the end, the energy crisis will have a smaller impact on inflation and global growth manages to escape from its teeth, right? Energy stocks looking to the future, but in transition, the, tra the traditional energy and industrial metal companies as the role will still be transitional to a more clean energy. So in the transitional phase, look at the traditional energy stocks. I said it in my Patreon um, bull market watch channel about seven months ago. I said that we need to focus on oil and gas. I showed a BlackRock ETF that was about oil, uh, that, that was focused on oil because oil will still will, will play 
a big role still in this transitional phase. Natural gas will play a big role in the transitional phase. Metal companies will play a role. So look at that. Now, if you want to go into even bigger into the deeper future, obviously you can start positioning yourself in green energy stocks, all out for 100% green energy stocks. Automotive and heavy industry is another sector we should look at that will have a more effective strategic pollution management. Companies that will benefit from increased funding uh, for building renovations is something else, green transportation, but also companies that promote decarbonization technologies. Look at those companies that, pro that promote decarbonization technology. It could be tech companies. They're going to do well, right? Such as offshore wind farms. Yes, okay. Decarbonization technology, offshore wind farms, uh, the use of hydrogen as fuel, carbon capture technologies, and so on. Another thing that some people will miss out on big time and this stocks will skyrocket mark my words there's a few companies that will skyrocket and these companies are in this plastic packaging companies but not just any plastic comp uh, pa packaging companies these are plastic uh, company companies in the uh, with uh, producing plastic that provide solar and wind energy equipment right and this plastic packaging companies for for uh, for solar and wind energy a, a packaging equipment and so on i think will also do well respectively the financial sector if we consider that in addition to european or general public funds and large private funds will be oriented towards more sustainable investments defining the financial system as a necessary pillar for the green transition then yes the financial sector is one obviously you need to look at uh, let us not forget that in Europe, 30% of the recovery funds will be used to prevent climate change. So those are big opportunities in general that I told you. And in those big opportunities, if you search and do your due diligence, you're going to find awesome, awesome stocks. You can position yourself now for the next five years and uh, be profitable. Thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you guys all the best.